Amelia is in Boston. Hi, Amelia. How are you? Hi, Dave. Hi, Ken. I'm well. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, so I'm calling in today to get some guidance on getting on the same page with money uh, as my grandmother, actually. Um, she has given me a very generous gift um, and put it in a trust for me of $100,000 earmarked for tuition and for a purchase of my first home when the time comes. So we've taken chunks out of that over the years um, for tuition, and there's about 75000 left. I personally, outside of that, am just about to finish baby step three, so I'm looking to purchase my first home in the next one to three years. Now, the question here that's causing some uh, contention and disagreement is that that money is all invested in the market, mostly in index funds right now. And with me wanting to use it in the relatively short term, uh, my position is that we should take it out and have it in cash. Well, my grandmother's position is, you know, it's done well. It's earned great returns over the last several years. Why would we not want to continue that? So I'm looking on guidance as to how to have that conversation um, and do what I believe is the right thing with this money while, you know, still being extremely grateful for the gift. She gave you the money and she put it in trust and she's managing the trust. Correct. She's a bit of a control freak. Uh, I, I think with, with money, it's mainly a position of experience. You know, I'm 22. She's 74. So uh, she's got a lifetime of experience. And it does seem to me a bit controlling. You know, I'm a natural saver, been financially responsible yeah, my I mean, whole life. But, but, my yeah, family knows you, that. You, so. you're, you're in control, and the money was given to you to buy a house, and you can't take it out and buy a house with it. Right. I don't understand. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, that's that's the point that I'm stuck at, is how to have that conversation. Yeah. Um, so are yeah, you? when definitely. are you going to buy a house? Um, probably in two or three years. Why two I'm, or three years? Uh, because I'm not sure that I want to stay in this area long term. So, okay. uh, you know, I'm waiting to get a little confidence there before I make the financial commitment to a house. Okay. Well, this is more of an issue of, uh, you know, puppet master than it is actual financial advice right and, and so that you know you just got to decide which hill you want to die on um as, as far as the you know her advice goes it's not the end of the world okay let's say that those index funds went down 10 percent during that three years which would be one of the worst three-year periods in the stock market's history sure then you would have lost seven thousand dollars Right. Yeah. It's it's not end of the world either yeah, way. Yeah. And, and so, and if it goes up 10% during that time, you would have made $7,000. So, yep. you know, you, you, your fear of this money not, uh, of this money being in the market is not substantial, shouldn't be substantial because the actual dollar figures aren't going to be substantial. Her wanting to take advantage of the market is almost laughable because it's also <laughs> going to be about $7,000. Right. It's a f philosophical thing, you know, is really all it comes down to. So, you know, it the, and that reveals th that you guys are both being drama queens about this. Yeah, that's fair to say. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's not a big deal either way, but it's difficult to have the conversation. Yeah, it's just like, well, it's, um, gonna, it's a control conversation. Right. It's a puppet master conversation. And, you know, so... Like, I don't know if this woman is actually going to release this money when you're ready to buy a house. I can't tell. Yeah, I'm sometimes worried about that because yeah. um, yeah. she's actually taken out the, the growth that's already come onto the account over time. So, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Oh, she took it out and used it herself. Yeah. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Which, I mean, the original balance is still there, so that was her call, but. Wow. Uh, yeah, that was not something I expected. I was about to this say, is just Dave. just a little strange. So here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go about the business of building up your own down payment. Mm -hmm. And then if that money's there and she wants to give it to you, fine. If not, just tell her to keep it. Yeah, absolutely. That's fair enough. That's pretty much the plan yeah. uh, either way. <laughs> yeah, because I, I don't think you're going to win this argument one way or the other. Because <laughs> the problem with her actually letting you buy a house with the 75000 is that's the last conversation she has where she gets to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. And she really likes telling you what to do. <laughs> so I, Okay, so i got to ask you this. I'm surprised at your answer. 
I was a little surprised. Is it great? I mean, it's dead on, but I thought, don't you just die on that hill with the grandma? You told me this is what it was for. I'm not going to fight with you and ruin our relationship. But this That's is it. What- That's it. Yeah. I mean, because, listen, you can hear what's yeah. happening with this lady, uh-huh. and there is no winning the argument with this woman. 100% agree. Okay. So why have the argument? Because you're not going to win it. Right. You're either going to sever the relationship over $7,000, and the money's not the thing. It's the control. Mm-hmm. And um, so, and then the other side of that is, if I'm making a gift, if I'm the grandma, uh-huh. okay, I've often said on the air, you're going to get my money, you're going to get my instruction, okay? But I have never given someone a gift and then managed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's not a gift. Yeah, that's, that's controlling. So that's, you know, but I, I would say I'm not going to give you this gift if you're not doing yeah. these things. Yeah. But once it's given, mm-hmm. you need to take your hand off of it. I agree. And uh, So you're saying don't even try to have the conversation and go, hey, listen, I don't I, want to fight. I don't want this I, to go I sideways. I think you say, Grandma, I love you and thank you for the money. Okay. And I hope it's there. Okay. If you still want to do it when we get ready to buy a house, that'll be fine because we're going to go ahead and start building up our own down payment. I know you'll be proud of us when we did that. I love you. Thank mm-hmm. you. And just keep moving. Because what it does just takes all of her power away, and she mm. really is a lot about power. <laughs> That's true. What happens when gra- if Grandma dies before this? I suspect the trust has terms that leave it to that the would, beneficiary of the trust, which is, which is Amelia. Okay. That, okay. Yeah. That's good. I needed to process through that because yeah. sometimes it's like principle, let's have the conversation, and I think you're right. Now as I process what you said, I'm, it's I'm, like— I'm channeling my inner John Deloney just— <laughs> Just tell them you love them and keep going. You know? I think you're right. I was wondering, though. I was like, okay. I'm trying to right. be nicer. Deloney inspired me to be nicer. He's very nice. He is a nice guy. Very in touch with his feelings and ours. He's in touch with everyone's feelings. He really is. <laughs> he really is. That's good. And he has a lot of feelings. 